All right, so it's your boy Cody Mack here with What's the Word TV. And I'm in the building with the boy Preen. What's going on, boss? I'm hanging out, man. I'm chilling. Just on this radio promo tour. Moving to the Midwest. You look tired, man. Yeah. Uh, I wish I wasn't. I am, though. I can't lie to you. It's cool, man. You got to put in that work to get where you got to go, right? Yeah. All right. So when I when I first heard you was coming in the stool, um, I was I was a little confused, like who was Preen? But then when I looked it up, I'm like, it's P Ring, like I'm a fan of yours. You know, yeah, I, I appreciate that. got some of your music and then the hot boy track with Wayne. That's yeah. like when that premiered on title, I was bumping it. I was riding that, putting people on. So Before you knew it was P Ring? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that was crazy. Like I didn't even yeah. put to, put that together. Dope. So yeah, that's dope, bro. Like like yeah. the whole change. It's been funny to watch that experience happen with a lot of my P Rain day one supporters. I like to switch to premium because really and truly the only way to share with people that I switch from P-Rain to premium is through social media. Mm -hmm. So even if I post it, you might not see me post it that day. Or you might not have caught on that, you know, P-Rain is now premium. So I had somebody DM me the other day and they're like, yo, man, I got so upset at this dude premium because he took your style, man. He sounded just like you. <laughs> but then I found out it was you. So I got even happier because now I know you're back. I thought you, you quit. So, you know, it's been dope to find, like, just hear everybody's stories of their discovery process of the name Preem. It's fun for me, man, because, you know, Preem's a name I always had. You know, before I was even P Ring, I was Preem. You know, I, I had that name when I was, like, 14. I got it from Preem in you know, Southside Queens. I took the name Preem from, a, you know, an old drug dealer from Southside Queens from the Supreme team because I used to live in New York. Mm. And I used to always hear my family in Queens talk about, you know, the Supreme team and, and Prime. And he had all the cars, the jewelry, the women. And really, I was just, you know, I wanted that lifestyle. So when I moved back to Toronto and I started hustling, I called myself Prime. So before I even decided to rap, I was Prime. My family, my friends called me Prime. My first tattoo was Prime. You know what I'm saying? So p Rain was really a name that I just came up with to get off the cop's radar. Because when I started rapping, I was so well known by the police, I used to get in so much trouble that they would show up at my shows, my hostings, and, and cancel them. They would take my, go to the corner stores where I was selling mixtapes. I would sell my CDs at the corner stores. They would go to the corner stores, basically threaten new Chinese owners, because all Chinese owners in my neighborhood, and take all the CDs off the shelves, rip the posters off the wall, come to the shows and say, yo, he can't do this. You don't want to book him. He's a bad guy. He's from a bad neighborhood. So it was hard for me to make the transition from hustler to an artist try to, you know, do something positive because they just hated on me so crazy. So I changed my name to P. Rain, really, to just get off the cops' radar. Rainford is my real first name. That's the rain. P is just for Preem. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you know, the more success I got, the more, you know, they figured out eventually, just like you did, Preem was P. Rain. Right. And, you know, I, I started going through the same problems again. They started hating on me crazy. And I couldn't leave Canada. I had little charges and things like that, and you can't cross the border with the littlest charge. You know what I'm saying? So I, I've been stuck in Canada like my whole life. I just got in America like two years ago. Mm. So when I got to America, you know, I changed my name back. I'm legal. I got bread now. Legal bread. So, you know, I could do what I want. You know what I'm saying? So I changed my name back to Prime because I always felt like the police won, that they forced me to do something that I never really wanted to do. So I wanted my name back. All right. So it's two things in that, that, that sound bite you just said I want to touch on. The first one is that the charge. So is this that gun charge? Will, will you... And back in 20... Gun charges, drug charges. So you got caught with drug charges and gun charges. Yeah, I got caught with a lot of things, man. I've been caught with, I've been caught with charged with drugs a bunch of times. The gun case was just one time. But yeah, I've been charged with drugs a bunch of times. But I've always beat those cases. What type of drugs were there? Crack cocaine. Mm. You know, I sold crack. But um, when, when I was going through the process of trying to fight those cases, I kept trying to go to America. You got to think I'm sitting down watching Drake become the biggest rapper in the world. Him and all the homies on the road. I'm missing out. I was losing my mind. So I'd always try to get into the States, drive, fly, however. And they kept saying, yo, you're not allowed till you get something called a waiver. But I got denied for my waiver. It took forever. So I just kept trying, trying, trying. And I tried so much that they basically said, yo, you're banned. You know what I'm saying? So even when I beat my cases, I still couldn't go to the States because I tried to enter so many times before. So I had to get a crazy lawyer, go through that whole process, and finally. Mm. So this whole the justice reform thing is like it's something big for you too, because it's like the I system. Mean, it's, I think it's big for all of us. It's way bigger than you know. It's way bigger than just me. Like, you know, it basically ruined my life. 
I'd be a gazillionaire right now if I could have came to the States back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been rapping for a really long time, but there's only so much you can do being stuck in Canada as a hip-hop artist. Mm. If I could have came here fucking 10 years ago as a hip-hop artist, shit. You know, Lord knows the opportunities I would have had and how, how the things I would have went on to do. I know where I would have been. You know what I'm saying? So it ruined me, but, you know, I feel like everything happens for a reason. I've stayed positive about it, and I'm finally here, so I couldn't ask for anything more. My fans rode with me and kept me motivated through the entire process, so I'm grateful. But yeah, the whole justice reform thing that even Meek is speaking about is way, way bigger than just me, man. There's people in jail for smoking weed, for getting caught smoking weed, that are in jail doing years. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because now they're legalizing weed, and they're still not even letting those people out. That's just one issue. Like, they got a ton of issues to deal with, but you got to understand, we live in a society, especially in America, where... It's, it's slavery. Prisons are slavery. They make money off the prisons. If they get rid of that one rule, all these things have changed, but they got so much bread, they're never going to try to change that law. Like, Michael Jordan owns jails. Mm, yeah. He profits off of men doing work for no, for basically a penny a day or whatever it is in order for them to make money. So, you know, they want us in prison. Prison is something that they created after slavery. They're like, okay, slavery's done. How can we still make money off these black people, off these Mexican brown people, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's jail. It's the same thing as slavery. So, so I don't know why we haven't come together as a people yet to really fight and make these things, make a change, because all we do is march. But I think it's going to take way more than that. They're killing us in the streets. They're throwing us in prison for like 100 years for the littlest thing. They got three strikes. It could be the littlest thing. Then they give you parole. So you go out and you jaywalk. They put you back in jail to finish your original time. It's insane. Mm. And I know this on your track one day, you got some homies that's going, that's in there right now that's going, you know, it's because of these same reasons, right? Mm -hmm. And I, People that were convicted wrongfully. Like, I got, I got a lot of homies doing life in prison for murders that they didn't even commit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because I made that record like five years ago, four or five years ago, and it just came out. But one of the dudes that I was speaking about on the song, you hear him talking at the end of the record saying that he'll be home one day, is actually out. Dope. He did like 15 years and he won his appeal. They found new evidence actually proven that he was innocent for that murder and now he's here. He's home. Mm -hmm. So they can't tell me that people aren't in jail for no reason. I know for a fact they are. Mm. So I got a question, man. You seem like a real educated guy. You know, what made you get into the streets, bro? I had a kid right out of high school and, and I was rapping. And those things required money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fast money. And you know, my environment, I was probably one of the only dudes that I, in that neighborhood, that grew up with good grades. I was a straight-A student, one spelling bee. I could have did anything I wanted, but, like, everybody around me was hustling and had money. You know, it might not have been a lot of money, but, you know, they were doing those things. And I just wanted freedom. Do you understand? I was, I was selling drugs was basically, you know, owning your own business. You were an entrepreneur. You made your own hours. I couldn't sit at a desk. It just wasn't me. I had a child earlier son, I was terrified. I was like, how am I going to provide for this guy? You know, I can't go do these little telemarketing jobs. And, you know, um, I just really wanted to make money, man, quickly. I really wanted to pursue my rap career. Studio time was expensive. And you had to pay for it, like, you know, print CDs just to try to sell them back. So, you know, I had a lot of things. I had a, I had a lot of aspirations, a lot of goals, a lot of things I wanted to do. And I needed money to pay for it. So, drugs was the best way. Okay. So do you regret any of those decisions you made? It wasn't the best way, but for me, at the time, I thought drugs was the best way. Okay. All right, so I guess that question, you just you basically said you kind of, you don't really, if you can go back and do it over again, would you take those same uh, steps? No, I wouldn't at all, man. I've been like, if it wasn't for that, I would have been able to go to the States a long time ago. So my, my message to kids out there, especially when you're trying to really, really do something with your life, is man, stay away from anything illegal, period, because the system's set up to trap us. I and mean, everybody gets caught eventually. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's not even worth it. All right, man. So I'm going to wrap up this interview with this one question because you just said something in there. And it just kind of like threw me off for a loop. You said your boy Drizzy is like the Mike Jordan of rap, rap and R&B. That's a bold statement to make. What makes you think he he there? Well, if, we're really, if, you, if you want to talk facts and record sales and records broken and just facts, like forget about my opinion of what... I just, my opinion of his music compared to other people's music. In my opinion, just as a, a fan listening to, to music, just like we all do, 
Obviously, I'm a fan first. That's what made me want to rap. If I listen to Drake's album compared to anybody else's album, I think it's better. When you're talking about flows, lyrics, melodies, the way the, he's changed hip hop, the way it's going now, like, you know, there's people that obviously put melodies in their music before, but not to the scale that he's done it, and now everybody does it. You know what I'm saying? So when you're talking about flows, beats, melodies, all around good songs, you know, people that take their time with their music. I know for a fact that Drake's is better than anybody else you're going to compare him to. In my opinion, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Then if you're talking numbers, if you're talking number ones, the nigga right now has like three songs in the top five, top ten, three. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nobody even close to what he's doing. He dethroned himself. He was number one, put out Nice For What, and took himself God's plan out of number one spot. So if you're going to talk numbers, that's definitely not even a conversation. Hey. Yeah. You know, Michael Jordan always says six rings. Yeah. So if you're going to talk rings, you can't even compare none of these dudes to Drake right now. Good night.